Hi, this is Aaron and Linda with Traveling Flamingo, and today we're going to talk about all of the benefits of being on a small cruise ship versus a large cruise ship, and why on your next trip you might want to choose one of the smaller ones. All of that, coming right up. Just before we start, I'd like to say that I would be really happy with a small cruise or a big cruise. I've loved all of the cruises we've been on, on a small ship or a larger ship, so don't get me wrong, absolutely love it. But we do want to go over some of the benefits of cruising on a smaller ship, so you guys will know and have all the information to make your decision. And make sure you stay around for the end, because we do have some tips to help make sure you're able to get all the fun and enjoyment out of your cruise on a smaller ship. And if you like this video, we would appreciate a thumbs up and subscribing. So one of the benefits is the ratio of staffing. Because there are not as many guests on board, the crew can get to know you better. And some of our family was cruising, actually they were on a Viking River cruise, and there hadn't been any high tea. And you know, my family, we love high tea. And, and they sort of casually mentioned, oh, like I'm surprised there's no high tea. And they actually went out of their way to prepare and make scones and have this high tea for the guests to have. So I thought that was really cool. And as you said, they can get to know you, know your interests and preferences, drinks and all that. So that's definitely a benefit is that the staff can get to know you and your interests better. Another benefit along the same lines is that there's going to be less crowds. So the facilities might be smaller because the ship is smaller. However, there aren't as many people as well. So it doesn't always feel as crowded. A lot of the areas you're going to walk around on the ship, you don't feel like you're shoulder to shoulder necessarily with other people. And some of the venues and so forth that are popular won't be quite as overwhelmingly crowded as you get on larger ships. So you have a little bit more of an intimate feel you know, less people, it feels a lot less crowded on some of these smaller ships than those really large ones. When you're at the ports, you will also notice a difference when you're on a smaller cruise ship because there are not as many guests. So you don't have thousands and thousands of people trying to get off and experience the port and the excursions. So it's definitely not as busy. We found when we did our Baltic cruise, it was a very large cruise ship and the ports could also often have a couple cruise ships in at once and Estonia I think it was Estonia when it was insane how packed it was we were trying to get this beautiful view of the city and you're like 10 people deep trying to get close to the front it was nuts like definitely those larger cruise ships you do feel it at the ports for sure yeah, there's a lot of areas where you just want a quiet port. Alaska, for instance, we really enjoyed having just quiet ports. There weren't very many ships in. That said, you could be at a port and a giant ship pulls up, which makes it very busy for you. If you are interested, you can actually Google the port and it will usually tell you the schedule of ships coming in. So you can determine whether or not that sailing specifically is going to have a very busy port or if it's going to be pretty quiet because nothing's, uh, nothing's uh, nothing so bad as being in port in a little ship having a nice quiet uh, day and all of a sudden this giant Royal Caribbean ship comes and you got, you know, 5,000 guests coming off. So you can look that up and you can identify online if that port's gonna be really busy or not, which is nice. Another benefit of the smaller ships is they can usually be slightly cheaper and usually they're cheaper because they are older ships. Most of the ships that are being built these days are gigantic things. Uh, so your older ships are usually your smaller ships. That doesn't mean that they've not been refurbished and are great inside. However, they are gonna probably be the older ones and therefore you know, arguably less popular, so the price is a little bit lower. You may not notice this all the time. There are high seasons and low seasons, of course, but generally speaking, the price will be a bit cheaper, which is great because you can have a wonderful cruise and spend less money. Smaller ships also can offer some uniqueness in the itinerary that they can offer. Because they are smaller, they're able to get into more ports, which is great. So if there's somewhere you wanted to visit and they might not be accessible to the larger ships, so you definitely would want to check out to see if those smaller ships can get into the ports. The smaller ships can also go through the Panama Canal. So if you do find a ship that you really like, you know, one week it might be doing Europe, the next week it might be doing Alaska. So definitely you can check out which ship you want and look to see where it's sailing as well to see if it lines up for what you're interested in. I think as well there's a lot of ports that are smaller and more unique and things that you don't necessarily want to have quite so many uh, people in. So being able to get into some of these more unique itineraries definitely, uh, it definitely is a great plus with a lot of these smaller ships. 
Some of the bigger ships are starting to do this as well. Unfortunately, you're seeing things like the uh, NCL Bliss, which is doing the Alaska inside passage routes. And some of those uh, ports are probably just gonna get slammed with people because it's just such a large ship. So I think some of these smaller ships going places where these bigger ones aren't going gives you a bit of a different vacation and a bit of a different feel on these really cool itineraries that you don't generally always see. Another really important part of smaller ships is they are more accessible. So if you have trouble walking around or going long distances, these ships are smaller and therefore you don't have to go as far. A lot of these giant ships that are out there, you could be walking you know, football fields back and forth, back and forth. Whereas these smaller ships are again, smaller and therefore easier to get around. The elevators don't get as crowded. It's not quite as packed as you might have on other ships. So if you are somebody who has accessibility needs or if you're somebody who just doesn't want to walk around a bunch of ships, uh, you know, up and down, up and down hallways, the smaller ships could be a way to go for you because again, you don't have as much of that, which is great. Yeah, we're pretty active people. And I even know when we go to Disney and you're getting over 20,000 steps a day, but I did not expect to be hitting, you know, as many steps a day, even on sea days. Like I get on port days, but it's a sea day and I'm still having so many steps uh, just because of the size of the ship. So, you know, as Aaron said, just be prepared for that. So you know what you can choose for your vacation. The atmosphere can also feel really different on a smaller ship as well. So Princess is more of a traditional cruising style anyway. So when you go from a larger ship to a smaller ship, you may not feel the difference as much. I mean, there may not be as many entertainment venues and stuff, but in terms of the actual feel of the ship and the atmosphere, it's not very different. But if you're used to traveling on cruise lines like Royal Caribbean, which are known to have a lot more of the entertainment, like flow riders or rock climbing walls, you won't get those on the smaller ship. So if you do have a cruise line though, that you enjoy cruising on like Royal Caribbean, but would maybe appreciate a calmer, maybe not as busy cruise, then you could look at one of their smaller cruise ships for sure. And lastly, before we get into the tips, entertainment tends to be a little bit different on smaller ships from larger ships. Generally speaking, your smaller ship will of course have your main theater and all of those great productions that you expect on a cruise ship. However, they don't quite have as many of those. So the entertainment tends to be more unique, whether that's more sort of stage shows in terms of like, uh, you know, the dating game type of show that you see, or even just somebody, you know, playing music just in a hallway. You know, there's a lot more sort of creative uses of entertainment throughout the ship than what you might see on a larger ship, which has all these different venues that are kind of state of the art, which of course are amazing, but it's more varied and sort of more impromptu when you're on a smaller ship. And that can be very nice. And we kind of really enjoy that where you can just sit down and there's a great sort of pianist playing at the piano bar or, you know, some other form of entertainment going on on public areas of the ship. So we, we do enjoy that a lot on smaller ships. All right, now on to the tips. Thank you for staying this long into the video. Our first tip is these tend to always be older ships because a lot of the newer ships are larger. So, you know, make sure you're getting on a refurbished ship or a ship that was recently refurbished. You can Google that information and it'll tell you the last time it was refurbished. I'd say maybe within eight or nine years, you'd probably want to refurb, maybe more seven to eight years. Another important factor here is that smaller ships tend to also be more affected by waves. Nothing horrible, these ships are always really well built, but if you are a bit more susceptible to motion sickness or seasickness, you may wanna rethink a small, small ship and you may wanna make sure that it has stabilizers. So the stabilizer on the ship will make it so that when you go up and down, it counteracts that. And again, you can Google that information too. And our last tip, there always tends to be fewer balconies on smaller ships. So if you do want a balcony and that's what you're looking for for your, your cruise vacation, make sure that they're available and make sure you book early because they will go quick because there are more limited quantities of them. So you will want to double check that there is balconies available and when you do, book that cruise. Well, there you have it. That is our list as to why you should consider a smaller cruise ship on your next cruise. We hope that you enjoyed this video and it provided some value in choosing your next cruise. If so, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to consider subscribing. We have a bunch of videos on cruising as well as Disney. And if you're interested in either of those two topics, we may be biased, but this is a great place to subscribe to. As always, we want to wish you happy travels.